Who would have thought a simple contention like rigid armour is more protected than soft armour would cause such a hoo-ha? But, you know, there you are. What do I know? Um, so this is just a quick follow-up video to address some of the points that have popped up in the ensuing discussion. So, first question, were the blows valid or were they too hard? Okay, now, what I tested the melon on before, I was just doing the sort of cuts that I do on uh, people on almost, you know, several times a week in just general free play, okay? I wasn't powering it in, I was, you know, just swinging through with a soft wrist and taking as much energy out of the sweep as you can, but still making it a realistic cut, okay? Which is, of course, what we should be all aiming to do. Um, so I'm going to do it again, this time. Uh, so same melon, same bag, same cut, same sword. Um, and I'm even going to do it through the heaviest grade of armour that we tested, so the coat of plates. And this time I'm going to do it at full power and see what the difference is. Well, first thing I can tell you is... I just mushed my coat of plates. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but a proper full force blow actually bent them. Look at that. So, not quite 90 degrees, but fairly significantly bent. Uh, let's see if that managed to protect the melon. Alright, so I have kind of mushed in the melon under there and shattered it, really. Okay. Obviously no actual cut went through, but a lot more force was transmitted through the coat of plates into that than when I took the energy out of it and just swept through, as I did in the first demonstration. Um, so that hopefully answers that question. Um, and also, I guess, serves to demonstrate that this... I'm not talking about, you know, real heavy grade armour. This is pretty, pretty light stuff. Um, it weighs a bit more than a Spez jacket, yeah, sure. But, you know, not that much. And it doesn't offer the sort of protection that a real life coat of plates would, okay? This is just a better way of protecting yourself gram for gram than soft material. If somebody really wanted to hurt me through this and they swung really hard, obviously they could. That would have been a really nasty blow and would have cracked ribs even underneath this, okay? And it's not what we're after. We're not trying to power in at full power, obviously, and we're not trying to wear armour that protects us from that. If we want to do that, there's Battle of the Nations. You can go and do that instead, okay? Um, this would not be Battle of the Nations grade, okay? Um, so hopefully that answers that query. Uh, just one other thing that I want to mention is that, you know, if I've done my job right there, you shouldn't have been able to tell the difference between the softened blow and the hard blow, okay? They should look pretty well exactly the same all the way through, the only difference being in the amount of energy that is imparted into the target. So I'll probably splice them both in here and uh, see if you can tell the difference. So, uh, people are saying, well, isn't something like this restricted to your movement? Um, absolutely not, okay? I can bend down, I can bend back, I can turn, I can twist, I can move my arms, I can sing and dance and do all the things that I could do without it. Um, I actually find it less restrictive than the spares jacket because it gets quite tight. Um, I find it a little bit pulley on the shoulders, whereas because this is nice and loose, um, I've got absolutely full range of motion inside it with both arms and body and, you know, absolutely no problems at all. Uh, somebody said, well, isn't it dangerous to, dangerous to wrestle in it and be thrown? Um, no, I don't know why you would think that. So, I've had this for, you know, six or seven years maybe, so that's happened to me dozens, maybe hundreds of times, who knows. Um, and I'm still intact, okay? So, 
no, there's, there's no issue in being thrown around in something like this. How's, how's it going to hurt? That's ridiculous. You know, I mean, you could argue, particularly if you are doing so outside, you're safer in this than you are in padding because if you hit a sharp rock or something, uh, you're actually going to be better protected. But, you know, grapples, throws, no issue at all. Not in any way unsafe for anybody. So that's a weird one, but you know, somebody asked. Uh, aesthetics. I have nothing to say on that. Seriously, you're worried about how it looks. You know, I mean, if you're concerned, you could wrap a belt around it if you think that makes it look better, you know, or get a, a surcoat with your club's logo emblazoned on it, or make it out of pretty pink floral material, whatever turns you on, okay? It doesn't matter. Practicality is much, much more important. And I'm not saying that this is the best thing in the universe. There are definitely things I would do differently where I'm designing one from scratch for any use for mass production, okay? This is just an example of something that does the job that I wear. Um, and there's no reason that you couldn't design something that looks better, that does exactly the same job and has the same sort of features that I've been talking about. So this thing is obviously a heavier grade of armour. Um, made from leather on the outside, linen on the inside, sewn into tubes, stuffed with cotton waste. And this is a really a much more accurate version of what people actually wore uh, and how historical benching jacks were actually made. Now, is it heavy? No, not really. Okay, I feel like I'm wearing a heavy winter grey coat. Okay, so it's really not that heavy. Um, it doesn't restrict my movement. Well, I'm not going to say that it doesn't entirely. You know, it is reasonably stiff, but not in any way that I actually notice when I'm fencing. Um, I can bend down, I can bend back, I can turn around, I can, you know, I can lunge, I can squat down and up, and jump, and move my arms either together or singly in a full range of motion uh, without any restriction. Um, I don't know, what else do you want me to do? So the point is that maybe it's a bit restrictive, but honestly not very much, not that you'd notice. Um, now, if we could find a Pakistani cricket pad factory that could make cricket pads in human body shape, that would be fantastic, that would be gold standard and we would have a historically accurate um, and highly protective kind of fencing jacket. But honestly, I think having some plates of rigid plastic in between a couple of layers of linen is probably more realistic as far as uh, mass manufacturing goes. Um, somebody also asked why I would wear the heavier stuff as opposed to the lighter stuff. Um, well, obviously for heavy weapons it's better. But, um, for the most part, this is what I wear as sort of coaching armour, if you like, you know, so when I'm fighting with a student, my aim is not to beat them into a pulp, my aim is to let them hit me when they do the right thing, and doing that a lot, you know, you get bruised up, and so I prefer to wear something a little bit extra padded when I'm in that situation. Um, and I believe that in modern fencing, it's pretty much the same idea with fiction jackets are actually more heavily padded than normal fencing gear for exactly the same reason. So, a few other little points just to finish off with. Um, first of all, couldn't you just wear a plastron underneath your soft kit, people ask. Well, yes, yes you could. That would be good. Do that. That would be much better. Um, unfortunately, people just don't. They just tend to rely on, on the, the, the padding alone and it's just not good enough. Um, and I guess two other points about that is that you don't actually need the padding, okay? If, if the padding's not protecting you, why wear it at all? Why not just go for something rigid like a plastron with, you know, extra bits that cover all the important bits of your body? You know, why just not have something rigid and very, very lightly padded rather than all the stuffing? Um, I can tell you that you don't need the padding. If you, if you have something rigid, you know, you know, talking in normal sorts of blows that we do, 
um, that it's perfectly acceptable. The only thing you need between yourself and the plates is a little bit of air. So as long as it's not too snug to your body, you know, it's fine. Um, the other point about it is that it's much cooler. And I know I go on, go on about this, but, you know, it's supposedly autumn here and today it was 33 degrees Celsius. And, uh, you know, we all know the planet's just getting warmer. And so the idea of, you know, wrapping myself in what's essentially three layers of blankets today is not very appealing. So if we can get something that is just as light and just as flexible and more protective and cooler, why, why wouldn't you want that? You know, that's that's what I'm saying. Um, another comment was, well, I only do longsword and I don't get hit on the torso. Well, you know, I hit people on the torso with longswords all the time. Um, it does happen. Uh, um, in fact, I'm going to insert a little clip here because I just I happen to have it left over on my computer um, from a number of years ago, uh, which serves to illustrate the problem again. Okay, so here... Vader takes a swipe across the middle, which had it been to his mask, which is rigid, or to his van brace, which is rigid, uh, would have been a nothing blow, okay? It would have been just, you know, nothing. Um, but because it hits a sensitive part in his solar plexus, which is inadequately padded because all he's got on is a very thin gambeson, um, he gets rather badly winded um, and is knocked out of the fight for a little bit. And, you know, definitely wasn't pleasant. Um, had I powered it in with a little bit more energy, it could have been actually nasty. But, you know, I didn't. It was just a swipe and he was fine. Um, but the problem here is the inadequate padding. So there you are, it does happen, even in longsword. And the, the other thing to say on that point is that, you know, historical European martial arts is not just longsword, okay? There are other things. Um, uh, broadsword or, or military sabre, you get hit on the sort of the belly and the upper thighs all the time. Um, and, uh, you know, having something to, to take that impact would be rather nice. Um, Plus, of course, there are sort of impact weapons such as quarterstaff or shillelagh, so, you know, four-foot stick with a lump on the end. Um, polex, okay, unarmoured polex. It would be nice to have something a little bit stiffer to take those impacts. Uh, short little choppy things, messes and dusaks and cutlasses and boarding axes and, and those sorts of things, because they're short. They deliver a pretty significant wallop, and again... Having something a little bit more rigid to take those impacts would be good. Uh, then there's, you know, thrusting weapons, spear, um, even even small sword and rapier. Okay, I prefer stiffer blades on those things because they give a much more realistic blade-on-blade uh, -blade feeling. Um, but being stiff, of course, that they hit reasonably hard when you deliver a thrust, and it's nice to have something on your body to help spread that thrust. Um... Spadoni, okay, Spadoni is becoming a huge thing, you know, and, and soft padding is just not adequate for Spadoni sparring, and any shield thing, sword and buckler, sword and broadsword and taj, side sword and rotella, uh, even Viking shield, okay, at some point you're going to be whacked in the body with the edge of the other person's shield, okay, it's a perfectly valid thing to do. And having something that's nice and rigid that can withstand that, again, is good. Um, so if you've got any interest in, you know, exploring the full gamut of Western martial arts, then you really, we really should be asking manufacturers for kit that's good for everything, okay? And not just one particular weapon or even one style of that particular weapon, um, what we really need something is a little bit more universal that can handle um, a variety of different uh, weapons and different levels of impact. Um, the final point, I guess, was the inevitable argument of, of, of armour versus control. Okay, 
So on one side, we have people who think that, you know, they, they like to dress up in armour of way, way heavier grade than anything used historically, and then hit each other as hard as they possibly can with heavy blunt weapons. Uh, I have no interest in such things. It doesn't seem to bear any resemblance to anything in the treatises, so, you know, nonsense um, and not relevant to this current discussion. On the other end of the spectrum, we have people who think that you know, you should have so much control over your weapon you can essentially fight naked. And that's equally nonsense, I'm afraid. Um, you know, I'm not saying control isn't a good thing. But we have to be able to hit each other with some level of force, okay? Um, for a start, if you don't swing your blows with any sort of power or commitment, how do you ever know if your parries are going to work, okay? I, I know I have fenced people who have never experienced a full-armed cut and have and their, their technique is completely inadequate for defending themselves from it um you need to be able to put some amount of power in in order to learn how to deal with it um on top of that you know if i've got a a, a three foot broadsword and the end of a sort of two and a bit foot arm at full extension moving through an arc it, it, by the time it reaches the target that tip is moving at a fair whack you know, and I can pull a lot of power out of it as it hits, but it's still going to hit with some amount of force, you know, and so it should. And so we really need to be able to come up with some sort of, uh, you know, wear, wear padding of some sort that is capable of dealing with those sorts of cuts um, without any particular danger. And it's not that hard. I don't know, we're talking terribly heavy grade stuff for that sort of thing. Um... It is, however, an interesting place for the discussion to go for. Um, what is a martially effective cut? How hard does it actually have to be? Um, what effect does it have on the target? Um, how can we simulate it in a reasonably safe manner with as little impact as possible on, on the person that we're aiming at? Um, and once that, estab that is established, then you can ask, well, what sort of defensive armor do I need to defend myself from that blow? Um, so I think that's an interesting question. And so I'm going planning to do a video on precisely that. It's obviously going to take a little time to put together as it will involve test cutting of various things. Um, so watch this space uh, for what is a martially effective blow and how do we do it safely um, coming very soon.